Thank you for staying with us. And that's where we're going, the Zamfara security. We do, we, like, we do remember that the Zamfara state government had accused the federal government of negotiating with bandits, which suggests that they are on separate pages. And this may hinder their quest to tackle the terrorist, the terrorist situation headlong. Our guest is Sunny Abdullahi Shinkafu, who's a former chairman of the Committee on P Prosecution of Armed Banditry and Related Offenses in Zamfara. Thank you for joining us. Um, you have been, you were a former chairman of a committee set up to look at how to prosecute um, armed banditry and other related. This matter that is coming up now, the Zamfara state government and the federal government back, going back and forth. First of all, Zamfara state government, I said, we're not negotiating with bandits. But now the government's saying the federal government is negotiating with bandits. What's going on here? Well, you, you see the constitutional responsibility of any serious government is to start people, also to provide security of lives and property. So the issue of protection of lives and properties of citizenry lies within the ambit and the functions of the federal government. Mr. President is the commander-in-chief of armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is on record when the students of the Federal University of were arrested, were kidnapped and adopted by armed bandit. President gave a marching order to military and the security agencies to rescue this kidnapped female student, which were kidnapped last week in Guso, who are also students of the Parallel University. So there are many approaches in the fight against insecurity which comprise terrorism, and banditry, factory rustling, kidnapping for ransom. That is two approach, kinetic and non-kinetic approach. So the kinetic approach is why you use total military operation in the fight against and banditry, terrorism, and any any form of criminality. Non-kinetic is where you engage traditional rulers, Fulani leaders, respected members of a society, and other religious bodies, even the, the security committee in a locality. Because to save some collateral damage, to save costs in buying arms and ammunition, and also to bring harmony in a locality. So the state governor accusing federal government of negotiating with the bandit or negotiating with any form of criminals in the state is out of context. We should not play politics with the life of people and their properties. It is on record. The governor met with the national security advisor, with him and the governor of Niger State, and the also Senate committee chairman on security intelligence to discuss the way to go about restoring peace in Zambia. So if the office of NSA or the military or Ministry of Defense follows an approach to tackle the insecurity in Zamfara State, I think the governor will be very appreciative of that effort. Because the governor's responsibility is to govern the state and also to, to deliver dividend of democracy. 
When there's no peace, no security, all the social economic problem in the state will be downgraded. So um, I do know that there is no governor worth his onions that will sit down and watch his house in chaos and not do anything about it. And you said here now the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces. Yes. Right? All the security apparatus sits with the federal government. So he's the federal government that will deploy, so to speak. Now, if there's a situation on ground, if he has met with all of these people you mentioned, but he's saying now that he, as a state, has said, we will not negotiate with these people. But you are coming to, that's his stance. So do you think that he doesn't want to work with the federal government to end banditry in his state? What is what I was trying to say, uh, I'm very sorry to say, he's too economical on his tone. Because he knows, I know you know Nigerians know, Deployment of military lies within the powers of Mr. President. It's a constitutional responsibility of Mr. President to deploy Army, Air Force, including the Navy. Because one of the constitutional responsibilities of uh, Mr. President as a commander in charge of armed forces of the Federal of Nigeria is to protect the territorial integrity of a country at the land border, on the airspace, and on the sea. So if the governor is saying that he's not going to negotiate with the bandit, but the, the constitutional responsibility of the deployment of military forces lies within the powers of the governor, that is where the question arises. And he knows, I know, and the process is for the process. I knew more than 200 kidnapped victims were released unconditionally by the bandit previous week and last month. Mbrine Magaji, in Muhaye, in part of Maradun, including in Shinkafi, where I come from. Because the terrain, the military are parting this bandit. It is a very difficult terrain. And I have been saying time with, time with ad number that the military in Zamparasa are overstretched. They are under equipped, they are understaffed. In the whole of Zampara State military camp, you cannot see a functional CSK, ammo personnel carrier vehicle, to quartel this, this uh, bandit. So for the governor to sit down and be throwing accusing program of negotiating with the bandit. Internationally, there is two ways, as I have said earlier, to fight insecurity, terrorism, kidnapping, and any form of criminality that is kinetic and non-kinetic approach. Okay. Yeah. So if the federal government is going to use kinetic approach, to curtail or to tackle insecurity, I have seen nothing the governor should condemn because he cannot give an order to the commissioner of police to go and attack bandits. It is from the federal government. He cannot direct direct addresses to go and attack bandit camp Mr. or military or air force. Mr. Shinkafi, um, Nigeria is a democracy, right? The federation, so yeah. the states have their country, they have their powers within yes, their particular yes. environment. Um, if you you have your house, I don't live in your house, or you tell me there's a situation in your house, and then I go to your house to begin to try to resolve that situation. Yeah, wouldn't it be wise for me to speak with you and we work together to tidy up the situation in your house? Shouldn't that be the situation? This situation, you see, there must be a synergy. And that must be a symbiotic 
relationship between the federal government, the government, and even the local government. But what I'm saying, the governor knows, and the people of Zampara State knows, there is a peace dialogue between the leaders of Polani, traditional rulers, including security personnel, including representative of the governor, that is the commissioner for special duty, in Birne Magaj. I have a reliable information that the security agency sat with the representative of the governor in that who, peace dialogue. In the peace dialogue in Birne Magaj. Who initiated the peace dialogue? The peace dialogue is between the military, as is the military, and the state government and the locals there. Okay, so the military so representing the federal government, the state government, and the locals. Are there because what I'm trying to tell you, I have said it. You have to use two approach. Kinetic. A non-kinetic. A non-kinetic approach. Okay, we'll take a moment. We'll go on a quick break. We'll come back and pick it up from this point here. Please stay with us. Thank you. Welcome back. We still have Sunny Abdullahi Shinkafi, former chairman, Committee on Prosecution of Armed Banditry and Related Offenses here with us. Thank you for staying with us. Um, before we went on that break, you were talking about um, kinetic and non-kinetic approach to ending um, terrorism, I mean, banditry and terrorism basically across the country. Now, we do know that this is not something that just started. It's almost a decade since this matter really its ugly head. Um, the question then will be, why is it seeming impossible to end banditry? Well, uh, it is not impossible to end the banditry, but because of the, there are some contributing factors which make it very difficult to end uh, banditry within the shortest period of time. Uh, there is good causes of uh, banditry. Unless there is going to be a remedy on those root factors, that is uh, lack of proper laws and legislation to prosecute these unbanded, um, unbanded related offenses, which involve higher level of corruption on the part of security agencies higher level of corruption on the part of the judiciary. There is a lack of proper border control. That is population of smaller and lighter arms are being smuggled in the land border. And the frustrated share boundary with the Niger Republic. In my local government where I come from, you can't you can't spend one and a half hour without entering the Niger Republic. In Zulimi local government, you can't spend 20 to 30 minutes or 10 minutes to just cross the border, Niger border. So there should be a proper check and balances on this border control. Immigration are not doing the need for what they're supposed to do to stop illegal immigration of these aliens, foreign national, who smuggle smaller and lighter arms into Nigeria through the land border. Customs are not doing their work, what they're supposed to do. So what I'm saying, the most dangerous part of this banditry is that politicians are Throwing with the life of the ordinary citizens of Zampara State by playing politics with banditry and insecurity to 
get only cognize or undue publicity. This is one of the humbling block in finding lasting solution to this unbanditry. And also the issue of poverty, bad governance. Kidnapping poor ransom. If you look at it critically, these bandits, they are not promoting any ideology like Iswab, ISIS, Boko Haram, and Saradin. So this banditry is a criminal economic driving enterprise where you see in any society there is good and bad and ugly. So even in the military force there is bad acts who are aiding and abating and banditry. It's on record on the line in my community. Three uh, army personnel were arrested for selling arms and ammunition and military kits to this armed bandit. Yet, nobody knows the outcome of that investigation on the part of the military. And also on the part of the military, again, there is also another military personnel arrested given a very important security intelligence report bandit whenever the air force want to attack the camp of the bandit uh, that military officer will have an information and he will relate to them and they will dodge from their head out yet that was that report was not made public and nobody knows what is going on so the problem like this adoption of the students for the Perry university uh, so, from my own personal opinion, I blame the governor because there is a security intelligence report which the DSS gave to the state of gov government and action agencies that the, gov the bandits have planned to attack educational institutions and the schools in Zampara State. Yet, that has been done. No, hold on. I blame the manager of the university. Okay. And action agency. You know, you said something here that uh, my colleagues in Lagos have questions for you, but just weigh in on this one. You just said here now that there's a security report from the DSS given to the governor. Yes, and the okay, action agency. But earlier you said also that it is the governor cannot, in your words, yes. cannot deploy the security agencies or the or the or the military. You yes. said so. Yes. So if the report is there's there, a synergy between the state government and the federal government, even including the local government, in the fight against this. Uh, terrorism and insecurity okay. in the land. So the state governor who owns the house sees, mm -hmm. gets this report and takes it to the federal government and says, see what's happening, and no action is done. And then you now say that the state governor, you had said earlier that he's politicizing the whole situation. Is that what you said earlier? Yes, because, because he, 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 he visited the national security advisor on how to curtail the issue of insecurity. Okay. And as I have said earlier, the deployment of this security lies with the with the federal government. For the federal government. Okay. And uh, on this note, he has no constitutional right whatsoever to say that he's going to use full kinetic approach to end this banditry. He doesn't have some power because he's not, this military cannot take order from him. Okay, let, let, let's take this to my colleagues in Lagos. We'll come back here. Aya Buki. Yes, thank you, Nyota. Um, Mr. Shinkafi, I'm, I'm wondering if we missed out on whether or not you told about the details of this report by the DSS to the state governor. But before we explore that, let's touch on the negotiation that you talk about that you said uh, happened between the military, the state government, and the locals. I believe you, you said in Birinim Magaji, uh, if not, you can clarify that. If this indeed happened, then why the disagreement between the federal government and the Zamfara state government 
over, uh, you know, ongoing negotiations with bandits, with the defense minister clarifying, saying that we are not in any negotiation with um, bandits in Zamfara State, but the state government is insisting that uh, the federal government is engaging in negotiations with bandits in Zamfara State without carrying it along. So where did the disagreement arise from? If you're saying, telling us categorically that there is a representative of the state government in that negotiation. Well, it is very unfortunate that politicians are trying to play politics with the lives and property of the citizens in Zamfara State. It is on record. Anybody is at liberty to find the details from the secret police or from the military. Uh, when, the, when the peace dialogue was initiated in Birni Magaj, the representative of security personnel were there. The representative of the plani, that is Alaji Shinge, and other Pulani leaders, including traditional rulers, including the commissioner for special duty, the governor was there. Can any commissioner go and attend such sensitive meetings without the governor giving him an authority to represent him or to represent the state gov governor? So clearly the commissioner for special duty is is holding brief for his, for his principal, that is the governor. So the issue of the report we are talking about, the state security service made available report to the governor and the action agencies. There is some notorious uh, unbanded kimpins who have met it publicly that they are going to uh, uh, attack some educational institution in Zamfara State. Yet, the, 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 the state government, the action agencies, and the management of the University of Guso refused to take a proactive measures in curtailing the adoption or the occurrences of kidnapping of these uh, students. So this is a serious threat to the life and property of people of Zampara State. If the state government and federal government are accusing or counter accusation. So the most important thing is to save guide the life and property of the good people of Zamfara State. Enough is enough. The people of Zamfara State are, are tired of this banditry. The social economic <coughs> development in Zamfara State is in, stagn is in stagnation level. Nothing is going there. There is a lot of, of uh, people, who, millions of people who are displaced People cannot go to their palm lands. All economic activity in Zampara State is grounded. But Mr. Shinkafi... People are living in depression, in anxiety, in starvation, in hunger, in disease. Mr. Mr. Shinkafi, why do you think the state government is feigning ignorance of this ongoing negotiation if its own representative is in that... Uh, uh, negotiation with the federal government and bandits in Zamfara State? What I have said earlier, that the civic responsibility of any responsible government is to serve people and also to provide security. If the federal government is doing all effort to tackle this issue of insecurity through kinetic and non-kinetic approach, that is by the flowing Full military force, force to fight this banditry. They can also take a second leg of non kinetic approach. So the state government should be appreciative. And the governor also visited 
the Office of National Security Advisor with his counterpart governor from Niger State because we share boundary with Niger State from Ansado Axis and with the Senate Committee Chairman on Security and Intelligence. So for him to prove that he's ignorant of what is happening in Zampara State, I think he's not appreciative with what the government is trying to tackle the issue of insecurity in Zampara State. Well, Mr. Shinkafi, it if I can record. quickly uh, allow this me to... Just, just one second, uh, Mr. Shinkafi, if you don't mind me butting in very quickly, because, you know, it's unfortunately, well, it just so happens that, you know, quite a number of governors in Zampara State have a... Niger Zampara State has a history of negotiating with bandits over the years with some previous governors, Governor Yerima, Governor Atawali, and the rest of them. And a good number of them are still recommending that to the federal government now. But that's not even where I'm going. In all of the conversations you've had of that, one very important thing you said was that the DSS has information that these things happening now were going to happen. And you've said that nothing was done about it. Is there a role that the locals could have played? This is not in any way, manner, shape, or form, absolving government, federal, or state of their responsibilities. But is there a role for the locals? Because all insecurity is local. So is there a role that the uh, communities themselves, where these things happen, could have played with the local government authorities and all to ensure that these things don't even get as bad as it became, that it's lasted for this long? Most of this banditry, the denying, such rustling, and the displacement of people from their ancestral homes, mostly are in the remote area and the rural area, where the terrain is very difficult for the for the security personnel to launch an attack because of lack of modern equipment equipment to fight this banditry. The locals can play a very very good role in the curtailing this issue of insecurity by providing meaningful information or security intelligence to the action agencies and the secret police. But the problem, most of these locals also, because this banditry started for a decade, most of this uh, banditry some locals also were beneficiary of this banditry. Right. Because of informants, some the unpatriotic traditional rulers are aiding and abating this banditry. Okay. Mr. Shinkapi, we really have to go. Um, but you said in that meeting you said with the locals and all of that and security and all, you mentioned that there's... Commissioner for Special Duties in Zampara was in that meeting. Yes. What's the name of that commissioner? Uh, the commissioner for Special Duties is Nasuru Zurumi. Uh, because I have information here that they do not have any commissioner for Special Duties in Zampara. If moment. they don't have, they have commissioner for intergovernmental affairs, which is attached to the office of the governor. Okay. All right. if, they, if they don't have commissioner for Special Duty, do not they have? Nasur Zulimi in their, in their set executive council. All right. Mr. So Sani Abdullah Shinkafi is the former chairman committee on the prosecution of armed banditry and related offenses in Zampara State. Thank you for coming on to us. Thank, Thank you. And now let's look at uh, look a bit at what your comments are. We have this first one from Mohamed Gire, and it uh, says, Here we are again. The new CBN governor shouldn't have classified his interventions into short, medium, and long term. To me, when dealing with the long-term issues, they already tackled short- and medium-term challenges reemerge. Sadly, that's our system. We need a state of emergency-like approach. That's coming from Mohamed Giray. Well, we hope that is considered. This one is coming from Professor Imonoka in Nakina, and he says... The new CBN governor has preferred solutions to immediately fix the economy with his short-term solutions to deal with the monies owed and making everything transparent to all Nigerians to help bring the exchange rate down. Impressive, and Nigerians are hopeful. Sorry, that's from Honorable Adimola Laladi. Good. And uh, now the one from, <coughs> excuse me, Professor Nakena. 
certain portions of veritable government policies as predictable. This government's economic team and CBN must start by curtailing the pervasive economic inequality and endemic institutional corruption, which is pernicious to our development. Government must also redeploy the resources made from the removal of fuel subsidy in, the, in intervening in the critical sectors that impact on the daily lives of Nigerians, especially those below poverty line who are expected to experience the impact of governance, economic reforms and growth in the short and medium term. And Professor Inakira's uh, comments brings us to an end of Sunrise Daily this morning. Thank you for the privilege of being a part of your day. And uh, public holiday at that. I'm Ayama Kine. Have a great day. Indeed, ensure you make the best of the public holiday by resting. Thank you for watching. I am Vukola Koka. And while you rest, don't rest on your oars. You can do better than you did yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Above all, let's all work together to make our nation as what we want it to be. God bless you. I'm Neil Tagbe, and goodbye.